Welcome to Pop Workshop. In this video, I'm making a surprise for the grandkids and the grandkids cannot see this video until after Christmas. What I'm doing is making a special puzzle that they can put together and you can see the puzzle right up here that they're gonna have the opportunity to go to Disney World in the spring and they gotta put the puzzle together. So I'm gonna show you today how I made the puzzle and created this special surprise for the grandkids. So let's get started. Now this project actually began with the parents saying, hey, we want to be able to have the kids put together a puzzle and really surprise them for it as a Christmas gift. <laughs> and I thought that was a great idea. And it was a perfect opportunity to be able to use the laser to be able to design not only the project itself, but the puzzle pieces and cut it all out. The only thing we got to do is be able to keep it a secret from the grandkids so they can't watch this video. Now, when the parents found the actual artwork, I said, well, great, send it to me and you, I can download it from the phone and I can work with that. And they said they were going to send it to me as an SVG file. Well, let me tell you, all SVG files are not the same. When I got this file, it was something that was not workable and I could not fix the different problems that was in it. And as a result, I could not use that file to actually be able to engrave with the laser on the Lightburn software. So I had to pretty much start from scratch. When you open up Google search and you type in Disney Castle clip art, you're gonna find a wide variety of different clip art. What I think they actually had done is found one like this that was actually paid and they had sent that file to me. And it was very difficult to be able to work with and it ended up just tossing it out. What I chose to do is find one that was a free clip art. And right here is a good example. This is a free Disney castle. And so I just went ahead and chose this one. And now this was already an SVG file. So really all I need to be able to do is copy the image and then bring it directly into the Lightburn software. Off camera, I went ahead and built the Disney library. Now this is a video that I had done previously, so you can refer to that video on how I set up the art library. But from here I can take in the various components and be able to build this project. Now this was the original castle. and. I really did like the way the Mickey looked at the bottom. I wanted to be able to have that nice round uh, face of Mickey. So this is the one that I'm actually going to eliminate and bring another one in in just a moment. The three kids. The three kids was a separate file that the parents had sent to me that did work. So I can size them appropriately and be able to put them into place. So let's get rid of the castle that I don't want. I'm going to come over to the other element and I'll bring that in. Now this came in with that blue fill. Let's just change it to a line and you're going to see everything come out into place. Now this is the castle that I want and it does have the fireworks starburst in there and I have the kids in. Now right now I have everything ungrouped. So I can take the kids for an example, highlight them and I can move them really anywhere that I want. So I can slide them out of the way, I can resize them, and I can put them right back where I want them to be positioned. The date itself is another area that I want to be able to take a look at. This was a font that was already in Lightburn, but the parents wanted to be able to use the Disney font, so this one's going to have to go away. So I'll go back to the art library and I can pull in the April 2022, which is the Disney font. And I'll replace the one that I had originally put in with this one. And again, I can size this any shape that I want to be able to fit exactly in position. I haven't talked about the blue line yet. Now, this line is actually going to be eight and a half by the 11. Now, right now it's 8.9 inches. So I have to have this little lock unlocked and I can type in the 8.5 and that will resize this down to the correct size that they want. With this line in place, every single one of the components must fit inside of my blue box and that way it'll be the perfect size that they're looking for. One of the things that I want to show you is on this Mickey Starburst. 
Now, I did not do this in the actual engraving, and I wish I had. But the Mickey right here in the center is really of poor quality. And it's very easy to be able to change this out and put in a nice looking Mickey. And let me show you how to be able to do it. Mickey consists of three circles. I need two circles for the ears. So there's one and there's two. And then I need a third one that's going to be a little bit larger. And that's going to be for the face of Mickey. The next step is real easy. I want to be able to get them sized proportionally correct to the original image. The best way to show this is to highlight all three circles and actually put this on a separate layer. What I'm going to do is choose the red layer and that way you'll be able to see it and it will contrast with the black. From here, let's take the larger circle and I'll bring it over to the original and then I'm just going to scale it down so it's close. It does not have to be exact. Once I have a size that I like, let's get this one out of the way and I'll grab one of the ears. We'll slide that over and I'll do the exact same thing. I'll reduce it down so that it's close. From there, get it out of the way and I have two choices. I can just copy and paste this ear or just make the other ear the same size. It's time to put the ears onto the face of Mickey and that's just a simple matter of just grabbing each one of them and slotting them down into position. Now I went ahead and decided just to be able to type in the number and put it at the same size as the other ear and slide it right down into place. And I think that is a pretty good looking Mickey, but we're not quite finished yet. There's one last step that I want to be able to do. I want to highlight all three components and weld them together. And by doing that, they're now one piece and I got rid of all the inner lines. That's really not necessary. Let's highlight the old Mickey, get him out of the way, and let's take our new Mickey and slide him right in position where he belongs. The next step is just to go ahead and change the layer. I don't need him on the red layer any longer. I will put him back on the black layer and he is now part of this starburst. I can group everything together now and have one starburst and of course we'll get rid of the old Mickey we no longer need. Now like I said, I wish I had done this originally but I wanted to still show you how to do it. So if you need to be able to change and add this type of work to your art, you can certainly do it very, very easily. I think if you compare this starburst with the starburst on the left, you will see a big difference. And again, I certainly wish I had done this originally. Since I decided not to engrave this castle where it's totally black, I need to be able to change the look of this. So I'm going to have to change and put this onto a different layer. Now if this is all by itself right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and undo that, put it back where it needs to be. What I'm going to do is put this down on a different layer, and I'm going to put this on the green layer. At this point, I want to use the Offsetter app. This is set at 0 0.07. It does go outward. I could change this to make it go inward. And that would make sure that the hands for the kids down here would still be fine. And it would also make sure that I don't hit anything up here. And I can just hit OK. Now this is just going to cut the outline. That's what I want. So I have a blue layer now that defines the entire piece of artwork and I do not want that to output. Now the black is going to be a fill and it's going to cut out a little bit darker than the castle. I want the castle to be able to burn lightly. In light burn I have two different layers that are cutting. Black was first and that's going to be the darkest. It's going to take care of the starburst as well as the kids and the date that you see there. Once this is completed, it'll immediately go to the next layer on the list and cut out the castle itself. Now this portion is actually done. And remember I said this is two different projects. So I can take this out, move it around, do whatever I want to. Now let's go ahead and set up now for the puzzle pieces. 
To be able to get the layout for the puzzle itself, I came back to Google search and I typed in puzzle design clip art for the black and white. And it has a wide variety of different types of puzzle pieces that you can be able to use. What I wanted was one that had about 15 pieces that I could be able to use. So I just have to look through and find one that would work. As I'm scrolling down, I found this one right here, which was actually 16 pieces. And that works pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the resolution on this. And it was good, 1300 by 1369. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this by right clicking, copy the image. And when I open this up, I went ahead and came up here to the tools and I did the trace image. Now, since I've already done it, it's still in a light setting, so I can't do it again. So this is now the trace image in the Lightburn software. And I want to be able to zoom in real close so that you can see the double lines here. These are the individual pieces. So I can highlight just this and you can see an individual piece of the puzzle. That is what you're looking for. If this was individual single lines, it probably wouldn't fit together. So I can click on each one of these pieces and have an individual piece of the puzzle. So I'm going to zoom out and just show you. If I highlight one of these pieces, I can take it and actually remove it out of the area. And I'm left with another piece that I could highlight and I can move it out. So these are going to cut out individually. So let me go ahead and undo this now. And I'm going to undo this again. And now it's back where it belongs. So when this actually carves out, it is going to cut both of these lines individually. That's what you're looking for. That is going to make sure that it cuts correctly. In addition, as far as the settings, I'm going to be using the five inches per minute with the 95% power. And that's going to make it where it will cut all the way through my eighth inch plywood or basically three millimeter plywood. This green dot right here in the center, that is the center point and that's where I'm going to start the engraving with. It's important to use the center so that I have perfect alignment. I use the center on the first part and I'll use the center point on this carving. Last but certainly not least, make sure that you Take this layer and size it to the eight and a half by 11. I'm ready to begin cutting out the puzzle pieces. This is gonna work perfect because I'm using a center point as my guide. What I will do is go ahead and frame this. I wanna frame it just as an extra precaution to make sure that it is going to be exactly the way that I want it. And of course, to verify that this puzzle is centered. And you can see by looking at the framing process, it's exactly as it should be. This is to me one of the biggest advantages of using the center point as the point of origin because I can get it exact and I don't have any other guesswork. The last step, let's get the z-axis set. Now we have this little cylinder at the 30 millimeter, but since I'm cutting through, I want to actually have it a little bit lower. I actually set this at about 27, 28 millimeters to be able to cut this all the way through the plywood. Now it's time to grab the glasses and I hit start and it's starting the cutting of the puzzle pieces themselves. I made a big mistake and I want to be able to show you. I paused the engraving so that I could make this correction. I had forgot to put the metal sheet to protect the workbench and my cookie sheet underneath the project so it created that airspace between the project and the workbench. By pausing the machine, I was able to put the materials underneath the project, put the project back on top of my cookie sheet, and align everything again. And hit resume and continue cutting out the pieces. This is something that I really don't recommend doing, but it is something that is certainly doable. That first puzzle piece was actually cut. And when I moved everything, that can cause lots of problems. Because I had taken the time to get it perfectly square and I knew exactly the center point, I was able to put the piece exactly back where it belonged 
and hit resume and start all over again cutting out this puzzle and it worked absolutely amazing. I think it was probably more luck than anything else but it did work and I was able to save this. I did have another problem. If you look at this plywood it's actually curling up some. It's not resting directly onto the cookie sheet. What this is causing is for the laser not to be focused directly where it needs to be and it's not allowing that beam to cut all the way through but it's close. So if I take this and flip it over I can show you on the back side where it did cut through most of the places but the area where it did curl up it did not cut all the way through so it's going to take a little bit of extra work to be able to go ahead and separate all the pieces. So another very valuable lesson learned. I need to make sure that I can completely secure my plywood to my cookie sheet so it won't curl up. Well, the project is finished and I think it turned out fantastic. There was, however, a lot of very important lessons that I learned and I'm hoping that you will be able to learn from my mistakes. And if you like this video today, by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and while you're there, hit that little bell notification and the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of the videos that I'm uploading. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video that I do, whatever that may be. I think the grandkids are going to absolutely love the puzzle and love the trip.